This is the secret that's gonna change everything about your personal development journey. Ready? You've gotta learn while doing. That means starting before you're ready. That means doing it while you're still scared. And it means having a system in place for improving while taking action. That's what I learned from a recent guest on the podcast. His name is Eduardo Briseño, and in his new book, The Performance Paradox, available wherever you get your books, he talks about a concept called the learning zone. The concept is simple. By building the process of learning into the process of doing, you manage to be more productive overall while also continually improving over time. Sounds pretty good, right? It's a great idea, honestly, and he even shares a simple framework for how exactly you can do that. Let's say you're a professional athlete, and let's pretend that you play volleyball. Don't worry if you don't know anything about professional volleyball. I don't either. I'm not gonna get into any of those details. It doesn't matter for this. So, you're a professional volleyball player. Your day consists of practice, rest, eating well, and reviewing game tape. And then on some days, you have to actually perform. You need to go out to the court and play the other team with the intention of winning. I mean, after all, it's your job. Now, you might notice something here already. As a professional volleyball player, your life is broken up into two distinct areas. You've got your practice zone, your learning zone, and your performance zone. The performance zone is when you're actually playing games and you need to be on. The learning zone is basically everything else. It's the rest, it's the review, it's the thinking time, the practice, and honestly just spending time with your teammates too. And even within the performance zone itself, there is an enormous amount of learning built in. Like yes, you are on the court and you are relying on tried and true strategies, things that you've practiced over and over and over again, but you are still learning about the other team and their habits and the things that you should take advantage of in order to best utilize those strategies. So in the moment, you have to be learning as well. And the point is that even within the world of professional sports, something that we often look at as purely performance-based, it's just about showing up and doing the job. That learning component is critical for ongoing performance and for actually getting the results that you're looking for. But yet in our own lives and in our own work, we kind of ignore this part. It doesn't make sense. Whether it's in our professional world or our personal improvement, we tend to think that we need to constantly be performing if we wanna actually make progress. And to an extent, that's true. Taking action is what produces the value, the outcome. That's the like end part of that. But all the stuff leading up to the action, that's important too. How do we decide what to actually act on? How do we know if we're making the right choices? And maybe most importantly, how do we actually continue learning and improving while performing? The answer to those questions is what Eduardo calls the learning while doing cycle. So this is something I picked up from his book. Again, highly recommend picking it up, uh, but I've changed the wording very slightly just to make it a little bit easier to remember. Here's how it works. The first step is to try. Try the thing, whatever it might be. It doesn't actually matter how unprepared you are or how scared you might feel about it. The goal isn't to aim for success here, it's simply to gain an experience that we can operate from. The second step is to reflect. So now that we've tried something, we've gained that experience, let's take a minute to think about what actually happened. What was it that we were aiming for and what actually came from it? This step is where you're gonna actually collect the experience and put it into some kind of form that you can look back on and think about. The third step is to guess. So take a minute to think about why. What actually happened and why did it go that way? Did it go well? What contributed to that? Did it go poorly? Why did it go poorly? Take a minute to just form a quick thought as to what might be going on here. And you don't have to worry about being right. The goal again is not to be right here. The goal is just to start to make some guesses, form a hypothesis. And then the last step is to plan. So now that you've got a guess as to what went wrong and what went right, plan how you're gonna test that going forward. So how are you gonna actually try this thing again and see whether or not your guess was correct. And then once you've got your plan, you start over from the top. You try, you then reflect, you then guess, and then you plan again. That's it. By following this very, very simple structure, you can actually build the process of learning into the process of doing. And overall, what you're gonna get is significantly more productivity, significantly more engagement with the process, and you're gonna be moving much faster in your personal or professional development journey simply because you are taking more action. It allows you to embrace the process of failing or failing as something that is actually built into it and allows you to continue improving and getting better so you can keep moving the entire thing forward. It's actually a really simple process and if you wanna learn more like it, I recommend picking up Eduardo's book, The Performance Paradox, available wherever you get your books. I'm actually gonna have him on the podcast next week so make sure you tune in for that episode. Like the video if you like it, leave a comment before you go and remember that all big changes come from the tiny leaps you take every day.